everyone, my name is Anisha and thank you for joining me today for how to make your own homemade pie crust. I've had a lot of requests from you guys to make a video or a tutorial on how to make your own homemade pie crust. Hopefully today with these tips and me showing you exactly what to do, you're going to feel confident to make your own pie crust. So these are the kitchen utensils you're going to need today to make your own homemade pie crust. You're gonna need a rolling pin. Now I have two different rolling pins here. There's a French rolling pin, really long, obviously no handles. And the way that you roll pie crust out is like this. And I'm gonna be using this rolling pin today. They're actually not very expensive. They're about $15. And the second rolling pin I have is my grandmother's rolling pin. It's about, I don't know, 60, 70 years old. And a lot of you probably will have this one. This one will suffice for today. Um, whatever you have, just don't use a cup, which I've done a really long time ago. It will just be very uneven and haphazard. The second thing that you're going to need is a nice big countertop. So I know I have a big marble board here and you don't need that, but um, you just want a nice big space so that you feel comfortable rolling out your dough, that you don't feel like you're moving things around. So clear out your space. The third thing that you're gonna need is a nice big bowl. It doesn't matter what type of bowl you have. You could have a big clear bowl like mine, a big stainless steel bowl. It doesn't matter, salad bowl, just a nice big bowl. And the last thing that you're gonna need is obviously your pie tin. It can be a pie tin, it can be a ceramic pie plate, whatever you want to use. This is my preferred type of material. And the reason why I like these thin aluminum, they're actually supposed to be just one time use, is because they heat up really, really well. And then you get a nice crust and um, super crispy pie crust. So you're going to need a cup and one fourth of all purpose flour. I like this one from Bob's Red Mill. It's an unbleached organic flour. The next thing you're gonna need is a stick and two tablespoons of unsalted butter. And again, this one is a high butter fat at 85%, which means that you're gonna get even more flakiness in your pastry. You're also gonna need really cold water, a fourth of a cup and one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And you can put ice in that or just keep it in the freezer or the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. And to top it off, you're gonna need a pinch, well, a little bit more than that, a fourth teaspoon of salt. Let's get started, everyone. So you're gonna take your one cup food measure, stick it into the flour, and slightly aerate the flour. The reason why you're doing this is because flour, of course, it settles over time, and if you were to just scoop in, you would get a lot more flour than you really need. So aerate the flour a little bit, fill up your one cup measure, Take a toothpick or a back of a long knife and then just level off. Put that flour into your bowl. Then take your fourth cup measure, aerate it a little bit, you don't need to do as much. Try not to pack down the flour, put that into the bowl and you're done with all of that. Next I'm going to add the salt, really easy, just scoop out a fourth to a half teaspoon of salt, add it to the mixture, and there you go. Now I've taken the stick and two tablespoons of butter and I cut it up into these small little chunks. You can see this. And then I kind of freezed it for another 10 or 15 minutes. It's really cold. So I'm just gonna dump this into the flour mixture. And of course, make sure your hands are really clean while you're doing this because you're gonna make this pie dough by hand. All right, the flour is in, and you can see how I'm using my hand to coat the flour pieces. Okay, so now from here, you're gonna wanna work pretty quickly. So what you're gonna do, I, you can see the coated piece of butter with flour, obviously. I'm gonna push it with my fingertips, and I'm making these little pieces. So I'm just gonna go in and do that. And I have really small hands, but this for me is not that much work. So just have some patience, work quickly. It's gonna take a couple of minutes, but it, again, it's not difficult. 
And as you're doing this, if you get some restraint with some of the butter because it's really cold, you can leave it alone for room temperature if you're having a really hard time to let the butter soften. But I actually prefer working with super cold butter. So I'm still going with this butter. I'm pushing again with my fingertips, just like pincher claws like that. And you're gonna get these nice little flattened specks. When you don't read a lot of old school recipes, they'll say, make the butter or push the butter into pea-sized pieces. And that's what we're doing. So keep going. I'm gonna allow for you guys to really see how long this takes. It's actually quite easy. So for pies, it's in the realm of pastry. So it's definitely part of the pastry family, like tarts. I'm gonna keep going. And also a good thing to know is that if you wanna make like a pate, pate sucre, excuse me, which is more of a sweet dough or like a tart dough, you can add some granulated sugar to this recipe. So like a tablespoon or two of sugar. And also for a lot of tart doughs, they use eggs. So one egg, not many eggs, but maybe one. So I'm going to keep going, and you can see how quickly now I'm moving my fingers. This dough's almost there. Keep going. Now it's really starting to get nice and flaky. The butter has broken down significantly, and again, I don't have the biggest hands and it went pretty quick for me. So if I can do this, you can do this. Just make sure you're not in the same area of the bowl the whole time. Really move the butter and flour mixture around. So I'm gonna show you right here, I'm gonna take a little break. You can see the flour mixture and you can see how I still have some big chunks. Now, there's some bakers and some professionals who would go with this and they're quite happy with this consistency. I'm not that great with pie dough, so I'm gonna break it down a little bit more. I still will have a lot of butter flecks, like you're gonna be able to see the butter in the dough, which I will show you later. But let me keep going. It's also great for your forearms. You get really strong forearms if you're baking a lot. And it's quite hot in my kitchen. It's a hot day. It's about 84 degrees outside. So it's not the best optimal time to be making a pie dough. But you can see even under these conditions, it's totally doable. So don't be super resistant. As long as you are keeping your ingredients cold, your refrigerator and your freezer is your best friend. All right, everyone, I'm gonna stop there. That looks really good. So I'm gonna show you this final consistency. The dough is pretty malleable. It's soft, but it's still cold. And then I've got all these little bits of flour butter. So you can see all of my flour has been broken down. The flour, the butter, excuse me, is pretty soft and it's still a little bit cold, but because of my warm kitchen, what I'm gonna do right now is put this mixture into the freezer for maybe five minutes to get, to get the cold, get the butter, small pieces, nice and cold and wash my hands. Okay, everyone. So I have my chilled kind of butter flour mixture and I also pulled out of the refrigerator my fourth cup of water and one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. So you could have read a recipe that tells you add one teaspoon to three teaspoons of water. What I'm gonna teach you right now is that you're gonna figure it out for yourself. Everybody's 
atmosphere is a little bit different and depending on the times of the year, you're going to need more or less water. So just have your ingredients ready with the spoon, whatever spoon you have, and we're going to start. So I'm just going to take a spoonful of water, drizzle it in, and just mix it. Now I know for sure this is not enough water. I'm just going to give it a nice mix. And you're going to already see with that little bit of water, stuff is going to start to con congeal. It's going to start to pull together. Keep going. Mix it in. I didn't do that great, but you get the idea. So let me show you the bowl. You can see already things are pulling together. Make sure you scrape the sides of the bowl with your spoon. And another re uh, reason why I like using the spoon because my hands are hot. So use the spoon. So how do you test when the pie dough is ready? Because you're like, oh, it's just a whole bunch of crumbly bits. Well, you take the pie dough like this. See how it kind of mushes together? It's still pretty dry. So I'm going to add a little bit more. You can kind of clean off the spoon with your fingers. Again, make sure your hands are nice and clean. I'm going to drizzle this in and start to mix. And the more you make pie crusts, the easier this gets. You'll just have a really good intuition of when to stop with adding the liquid. Okay. I'm going to keep going. And the reason why I use apple cider vinegar because it kind of tenderizes the dough, which I like in my pie crust. Some people you'll read recipes where they use vodka because it obviously evaporates really well. It's really your prerogative. This is my recipe. This is what works for me. All right, so let's look at the dough now. It already looks even more hydrated. You can tell that it's not as, I don't know, flourly. You can see more distinct little pebble of flour and butter together. So let's try it now. Still pretty good. Let me take a big, so my hands are nice and warm. So see, all ready together. Now most people, well, I don't want to speak for others, but some people would stop here. I like a little bit more hydration in my dough, so I'm going to add a little bit more. You really just got to get a feel for it. Mix it around. Again, really well with your spoon. Okay, let's give this a try. Yeah, that's perfect. Now, if I add any more flour, this dough is pretty much going to be wretched and horrible to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands, get a clean film. I'm going to show you how to wrap it in a disc and there's a certain way that you're going to want to wrap it and roll it so that when you roll it out into the pie shape or for your pie pan, it won't have those crackly edges. Okay everyone, you're going to want to work quickly. So. Get your pie dough, and because your hands are going to be probably warm, you're just going to kind of form it into this little thing. And I'm going to put it right into the center of my two clean film. So I have two pieces of clean film that I put the edges of them together so that I have a little bit more space to wrap my pie dough. Okay, get rid of this. And then what I'm going to do is roughly form a disc. You don't want to handle this dough too much. And you can see the little pieces of butter still in the pie dough. And that's great. We want that. So I'm going to take the clean film, leave a little bit of room around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rolling pin. See how I'm rolling out to the edges? And what this does is when you go to let this pie dough rest now, all the way to the edges, that water, that liquid is going to hydrate all of that flour so that the edges don't crack when you're rolling the pie dough out. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not worried about that right now. 
make sure you get all the way to the edge. And there you go, super easy, fast, and you can see all of the little pieces of butter. Now this dough is really soft now, it's been handled, it's too warm to roll out. So you're going to need at least a half an hour to an hour for this pie dough to cool down, the butter to cool down, so that it's perfect for rolling out. If you skip this step, it's going to be so difficult to roll out this dough and you're just going to have melted butter everywhere. So chill your dough for a good amount of time and we're going to come back and then form it into the final shaping, which is into the pie pan. So I have my dough out of the fridge. It's been resting for about 40 minutes. It's really cold. I also have a piece of parchment paper and also my flour. So we're gonna get to rolling out this dough and then putting it into the pie pan. Okay, so first off, you're gonna work, wanna work quickly. You're gonna take your flour and you're gonna use a lot of flour. You could use less if you're more of a pro, but for right now we're gonna use a lot of flour, especially if you're not used to working with pastry dough like pie doughs. So I've got a lot of flour in the surface. Unwrap the pie crust. And then we're gonna place it onto the parchment. So you can tell that the dough is pretty much ready because I can push my finger into it. It leaves an indent, but it's not super soft where it goes down to the bottom of the parchment. So I'm actually gonna take a little bit more flour and dust the top and then start to roll this out. And as it begins to roll out, you wanna keep turning the dough. I'm not worried about these rack cracks. Just gonna start rolling it out. And if you notice, like, so for instance, my left side or your right side is a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna adjust that. And that's why I really love this rolling pin. See how I'm doing this? So I get a lot of control over the dough. And I'm keeping turning the dough. Keep turning. Try not to be too shy with the dough. You are telling the dough what to do. And I wanted to mention this little tool here. It's basically, basically a pastry cutter, and that gets under the dough really easily. Um, they're like $2. You can get them online, bakery supply stores. Even maybe Sir Latob has them now. They're really nice. If you don't have it for this, because you already have the parchment, you'll be fine. But if you plan on making pie crusts, you might want to get one. And that way you don't have to use your hands. Okay, so if you're seeing this dough, you can see there's some cracks. Again, I'm not worried about it. Kind of push those together keep going. Okay, so now I've kind of been going counterclockwise with my rolls, so I'm going to try to get some of these cracks out. So working now, again, I'm going to use my little pastry thing. You can see me move the dough. Kind of just iron out those cracks, trying to get the dough together. You always want to keep like whether you're doing croissants or tarts or pie dough or Danish dough, you want to keep that dough moving. Okay. All right, so we're getting there. We're almost there. So now I'm going to kind of address like there's some spots or like this spot's a little bit higher or thicker than the middle. So what you could do is roll in. Okay, you can see them evening stuff out and I want a little bit more of a circle this way so I'm going to take from this far end and pull the dough over and kind of like iron that out okay my rolling pin has a significant amount of flour on it now we're almost there and I know that because if I take my pie tin yeah we're almost there so I'm going to continue to go I don't want too thick of pie crust. Kind of iron out the edges. Now see how that pulled up? It's not a big deal, just stop right away. And it's a little bit warm, so I'm gonna add a little bit of flour. Now if this was like croissant dough, you couldn't add this much flour, 
but actually Pi Do is more forgiving than you think. Okay, just kind of iron that out. And you're not going to want to roll it out too thin, especially if you're more of a novice. You're going to have more tears. Okay, so you can see the action that I'm doing with my left hand. I'm right dominant, but the, left, the right hand is guiding and I'm just getting out all those little cracks. Okay, so I'd say we're good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a knife. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you don't have to, but I prefer just kind of edging off the edges now. Just chuck them off your workspace, get them out of the way. We're gonna make a nice little circle. And my dough's still relatively cold. If at this point it's not cold, it's, it's really heating up, you'll, you'll know. Take the parchment, put it on a large sheet pan, and put it in the freezer for a couple minutes to cool down. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going all the way around. Keep those little scraps, you might need them to kind of mend things later. All right, so I have this nice little circle now. And what I'm going to do is I'm taking my right hand or your dominant hand, I'm putting it under. Okay, so it might get a little bit messy. Try not to freak out, just do it quickly. Keep it low, don't bring the pan up high. Here we go, one, two, three, flip. Easy. And now it's already centered onto the pie plate. Okay, so now right here, it's a little bit, you can, I don't know if you can see, there's some leaking, like the butter is leaking a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is get a nice big, sheet pan. I'm just going to put this on the sheet pan. This is a nice pie dough. I'm going to put this in the freezer for another two minutes and it's going to cool down and then we're going to continue to shape it and I'll show you a really easy way to shape your pie crust. So I just got the pie crust out of the freezer. It was literally in the freezer for like two minutes. So don't overdo it. If it gets too hard, it's going to be hard to shape into the next part. You'll see. So take it off of your sheet pan. And I thought of something right now. Some people I know have really warm hands, so you can keep a little ice pack on your side and then have a little kitchen towel so your hands aren't wet, so you can keep your fingers nice and cool. Okay, so now we're just gonna kind of decorate or shape the pie crust. So you're gonna take the pie crust and see what I'm doing, I'm folding it under. Nothing crazy. If it feels like there's some sides that have a little bit more crust, you're gonna wanna tuck it under a little bit more, but we're just trying to get even. Keep going, try to be even. I don't worry too much about having it perfect. This side here is pretty buttery still, but it will be fine. The hardest part is done. Okay. And then the next part I show I will show you. It will camouflage any unevenness. Okay. Okay. Almost there. And then the perfectionist in me. So what I do too is I have the crust and I push it very gently to the insides of the pie pan. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dominant finger, pointer finger, and my undominant finger, thumb, and pointer finger like this. I'm gonna make a crimp and edge. So, see how I did that, I'll go slow. And I'm gonna go all the way around. You should have just enough of a lip.
to do that. Honestly, it doesn't have to look perfect because in my experience, unless you're using a little bit more shortening, it doesn't hold its space anyways in its shape anyways in the oven. So there you go. There's your pie crust. It looks really nice. You have these nice fluted edges, just handmade. There's other variations you could do. You could probably look in line and figure that out yourself. But the hardest part, again, is just rolling out the dough and then getting that into the pie pan. And I found by using the parchment and sliding the hand under to flip it on top, that really helps. So everyone, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, please feel free to leave comments, to ask me questions. I am more than happy to help you out. I hope that your baking is really successful. And I think that today we made a really nice crust. So you can either, again, bake this off right away, or you can wrap it up really well. It'll stay in your refrigerator maybe a couple of days, but it's better if you just freeze it, and it'll stay in your freezer for a good month if you wrap it up really well. You don't want any of the ice or water to start forming on your pie crust because it will alter the taste. And thanks so much for watching, and I appreciate you. Bye.